I'm here with uh, my good friend Kevin Bridge. We've never actually had the opportunity to shake hands, and we probably never will from this point forward. <laughs> 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 we will. We will. We'll just say how. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you know. But uh, Kevin is out in California. Uh, yes, he's uh, retired California Highway uh, Patrol. Is that right? Yes, or, correct. Okay. California Highway Patrol uh, began his career out there after serving in the Army. Yes. Uh, and you were an MP in the Army, I believe. Right? I was infantry. Oh, infantry. Okay. I was infantry. Yes. Okay. Should have been uh, an MP. I don't know what I was thinking. Okay. I went infantry. So, so you did your uh, your stint in the Army and then came out and ultimately ended up going to work with the California Highway Patrol. Yes. And, uh, yep. 1990. 1990. And, and you retired in? 2013. 2013. Yes. The interesting thing, folks, about Kevin Briggs, if you uh, don't know Kevin, he has written a book called The Guardian of the Golden Gate. Uh, he did not give himself that name. I just want to let you know that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but that's what everybody else said about him. And Yahoo News coined that phrase about Kevin. And uh, he's been on NBC News with documentaries, uh, has uh, been all around the world. And talking about one specific subject uh, that's dear and near to your heart. What is that? Right. Well, suicide. Suicide yeah. prevention. How do we talk to someone before yeah. they get to that level? And what do we do? So, so uh, Darren, you're, you are primarily patrolling that uh, the southern part of the, is that what it was? The southern part of the Golden Gate Bridge? Um, to be the Golden southern Packard. part of Marin County. Marin okay. County connects to San Francisco via that Golden Gate Bridge. Okay. So this is the southernmost part of Marin County and the, the, the Golden Gate Bridge as a whole. Okay. And during your time, I understand that you did over 200 interventions on that bridge, I believe. It's something close to that. Right. I averaged four to six a month for about, um, out of my 23-year career, about a good 10 years of that. Wow. Wow. So you add that up. I, I hate to give numbers. I really do. Sure. but. If you did the math, it comes up with quite a few people. And it's unfortunate. There's no badge of honor. It's it's a horrible thing to see and have to go through. But, you know, it's happening. It's still happening. There's a barrier going up on the bridge, but it's not there yet. So right. and I, when I talk to folks, I will let me throw it into play here and let me tell you some things. And I tell them, if you look at homicides in this country, homicides are going down. They're down. Right. Right. Traffic accident fatalities. I was a traffic cop. Those are going down. But suicides are going up. Right. Um, losing over 48,000 people a year just in this country. Mm -hmm. So this is heavy duty. And, and this coronavirus, I mean, we're going to lose more. Yeah. And let's, let's, let's talk about that for a second, because, I mean, we are in a crisis right now as yes, a country. Right. You've got individuals, you've got families, you've got companies that are in crisis. You've got police departments. I think 13% uh, of uh the New York Fire Department right now is on uh, medical leave, uh, yeah. and uh, it's just a it's an it's an epidemic, it's a pandemic. Uh, but the right. second the second wave that's the one I'm concerned about is the mental health crisis that's going to come uh, because of this. What do you think? I think so too. You talked with us a couple of weeks ago. We were you and I were speaking about this, and I think you called it. You know, we're going to get through this, but a little bit down the line. Um, I think we're gonna we're gonna have an upswing of of mental health issues. Right now, we're just trying to get through with this. We're we're kind of in the oh my god mode. Let's just get through the day. But as things, it may even get worse for a bit before they get better. That's but right. We will get through this. Um, but there could be some tough times ahead. But I think further down the line, because a lot of people are losing their jobs right now. Right. You know, and will they be able to recover? That's you right. know, this is a tough one. This, That's right. This is a tough one. I had a, a, a friend of mine the other night that uh, he, he had kind of uh, thrown out the idea that this was sort of like 9-11. I said, no, this is totally different from 9-11 uh, because even though 9-11 killed 3,000 people that day, uh, it didn't put the whole country out of work. And right. uh, in fact, I mean, in the military industrial complex kind of increases the economy during wartime and people are usually working so at yeah. this point nobody's working yeah it's very tragic you have so yeah. many people sitting at home you're gonna see 
crime numbers for a lot of things going down, but we're going to see domestic violence. I'm just telling you, yeah. and this, yeah. you're going to see domestic violence going up. It's, right. you know, we're getting people cooped up right. in, in homes. So, you know, you and I, uh, we're going to talk about that a bit today and, and what can we do? So Yeah, let's, let's talk about that because even yeah. though uh, our context here is suicide intervention, uh, and that's for a lot of people, it's a subject that they want to avoid. Uh, but what can we do during these times to uh, increase our resilience? Uh, I'll give you a perfect example. Um, you know, I was working out with my son last week, and he said, what's wrong? And I said, I just don't have any energy. You know, uh, it's like, and I think it's uh, the mental health, the, the stress because of what I do uh, and knowing what's going to come. Uh, I just didn't have any physical energy, uh, and that's because my mental energy was waning. Uh, so what what would you recommend, Kevin, uh, for some things that we can do while we're all cooped up in in, in isolation mode? Uh, as and and me being an introvert and someone who battles depression, so it's tough. But I tell you what, what I do, you know, first thing when you get up, get that shower, put some clothes on. That's that's half the battle right there is getting yeah, ready. That's good. Now maybe we don't go out that day. Maybe we're inside, but a leave. We're up, we're ready, we're shaved, whatever we need to get clean. That's a big part of it. You know, right. And getting some sort of routine. We may deviate from it, but some sort of routine. You say you worked out with your kid. Fantastic. That's great. You know, and you know, listening to one another, really taking that time uh, to listen. But also on the other side of that is being vulnerable. Guys, we don't we don't do that. And right. I was in these careers where I worked at San Quentin. I was in the airborne infantry and working with the Air patrol where we, we were not vulnerable, right? You, you did not show a weakness and it hurts a lot of us. And we'd get a lot of suicides because of it mm -hmm. being vulnerable. You know what? This is a tough day. Right. I don't feel like working. So I have days where I don't feel like stepping outside of the house. It is very, very strange. It's like, there's a wall there at that right. front door. Right. It's hard for me to explain, but it's there. It's present, but I know these things will pass. Right. So, Having someone, you know what? It's just not my day to day. Um, right. Maybe I read a book. Music is fantastic, but being able to say, you know what? This is just a tough day for me. We don't have to suck it up all the time and right. And be the the macho person. Right. That's good. That is. So you're That's saying, good. and then watch what you say. Think about what we're saying to one another. Right. Many times we have families, and and maybe there's. You don't have enough room in your house for for all everybody have their own room everybody wants their own room the kids want to have their video games and whatever else but just take a breath right be careful of what we're saying right that's very good and these close quarters nowadays so it's yeah. uh, uh it can be a little hard to do that but we got to practice uh kind of zipping the lip for a little bit if we need to yeah, so. and then maybe doing something new. Maybe you've always wanted to start cooking. Here's a good chance. Yeah, that's a great you can go time online to and figure it out. Maybe you want to learn barbecuing, whatever right. it is. And another thing is, and they seem obvious, and but until you do it, you know what? I am going to try something. Tomorrow, I want to try doing this. Right. Just try something. Maybe you want to start a new language. Just something to take up the monotony of having to sit here all this time. Right. I have a park. I'm lucky I have a park right across the street from me. Mm -hmm. So I can walk across there and, you know, silence can be very, very powerful right. also. Right. Just to go out there without anything on and just sit on a bench and just chill out for a bit. And mm -hmm. also, uh, we had talked about this. I want to share this now if it's okay. Okay, yeah. If she'll come to me. So I've had big dogs all my life. Bill, Bill, come. This is a big part of my stress relief is this little dog right here. Can we look? Right yeah. <laughs> here she is. So this is my first small dog ever. Her name is Bella, and she is so fantastic. I've never had a small dog. I was never, I didn't, I'm not going to say hated small dogs, but they yip, they bite, and everything else. She is so cute. So folks that, that have your animals, I mean, these are fantastic for stress relief. Just a few minutes a day when I'm up, this is the, the top story of, of my home. Um, this is my boy's room when they come to play, hence the, the Galaxy shirt behind me. But she stays up here with me whenever I'm here, up in this room, in my office. And she likes she likes it up here. She she stays on the bed. So, you know, animals can be wonderful for stress relief. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
Well, um, you had uh, you'd helped a man back in two thousand and five, March eleventh, two thousand five. His his name was also Kevin, and uh, I think you spent about ninety minutes with him, and um, he finally came back over to the right side of the bridge, and you asked him a question. He said, uh, "Why did you come back around?" And, and what was his response there? Right. And just to settle up for you really quick, this guy uh, went over the rail, the four-foot rail on the Golden Gate Bridge, and was standing on a very, very small pipe and wanted nothing to do with me, was screaming at me when I was trying to walk up and, and speak with him. But after some time, he did allow me. And when I told him, I'm just there to find out what's going on with you, why you're here today, when, what, what came to this, how did it, everything come in, and why you were on the bridge today, just to find out, to let him speak. And he started talking and he told me uh, everything that's been going on in his life. So I listened to him for a very, very long time. And then I focused on something that I thought may convince him at least to come over that day on his child. He had a small child. So we talked about that for a bit and he decided on his own to come back over, which I want. I want folks to come back over on their own. I think it, it provides a great stable place for them to start their second life, in my opinion. So I did, I asked him, you know, what was it that really got you to come back? And he said, you know what? You listened. Mm. You let me speak and you listened. Right. So, you know, when you're working on the bridge, it's a very, very difficult environment. You got all the traffic because we don't stop the traffic. It's very windy. It's very cold. I got radios and everything else going off. But for me, uh, everything that I got is just going towards him. I'm looking at him in the eye, giving him my full attention, not interrupting him. So those same things are what we apply out here. Sitting at home is what we can do. Give somebody your full attention when it comes down to these conversations where people are suffering and you want to help and you want to be there for them. Put yourself in their shoes is what I would say. Really try to imagine, wow, what are they going through? Mm -hmm. Um, that word listen, that's the name of my book, uh, Listen, Learn, Lead. Yes. And I know that you know how important that is. And so it's not all the time about what we're saying, but it's about what we're uh, allowing ourselves to hear. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of people don't want to hear that someone is in crisis because maybe they don't know what to do. Right. And so that's the first thing is just the willingness to listen uh, to those who are at risk and, and then being able to ask them the question, what are, what are some questions that you have asked people when they were on that wrong side of the bridge? I want to learn about them. <laughs> and if they would give me something, you know, that would tell me, well, their first name, everything I'd want to do. And this is about developing rapport. So if you have that at home, of course, most people do, man, that's, that's half the battle, but I mm -hmm. want to hear about what's been going on. Mm -hmm. And there's some things I don't, say and I don't discuss um, because I, I want to make everything about them mm -hmm. and well how could you do this I went through this similar thing and I came out fine and everything's great it's not about me right. it's about that individual right. so and things I want to stay clear of and these are, are a few of them that I, I tell folks all the time you should calm down mm -hmm. I understand things will get better right you right. don't know that right. right I don't understand exactly what you're going through um, I've been through some things. I've had cancer. I had testicular cancer when I was in the army. I've had some head injuries. I got three stents in my heart. I got a bunch of stuff, but I don't understand what that individual is going through. Mm -hmm. That's right. And shame, shame on me for thinking that I do. Right. That's right. Try to put yourself in their position and what they're going through. You know, maybe it's something it's huge for them. Maybe it wouldn't be that big a deal for us, but for mm -hmm. them it's huge. So, Hey, yeah, we're here for the be there for those people. I uh, I think uh, that is so profound because that's what we've got to do. It's uh, it's not that we have to understand. We seek to understand, uh, but we don't want to say we understand. But one of the, one of the things that I right. often say is is um, I can see, I can see. I may not understand, mm -hmm. but I can see that you're in a lot of pain, and Perfect. and. and Tell me more about that, and uh, that validates that it's uh, that their pain's real. I don't, I'm not blowing them off. Uh, 
you know, you're an army guy, you know, and even in, in, in law enforcement, you guys wear the bulletproof vest, but at night you take that off and you still got a heart that bleeds underneath it. Yep. And, yep. And, and you have to, we were talking about that before we came on, uh, you know, we suck it up and, uh, you know, in the military, we say suck it up, buttercup, you know, exactly. and uh, law enforcement says the same thing, but we're human beings. Right. And, and what you said about validating, and I'm totally cutting you off right here, I know, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I apologize. Right. It's, it's not typical, but I think we have a limited time. I yeah. really want to do that. You said it right there. To validate someone is huge. That's right. Wow. Right. That sounds really tough. That's right. To validate someone and then to normalize what they're going through. That's right. If you're talking to someone who may be suicidal, and folks, we're losing over 48,000 people a year in this country alone. Yeah. You know, you have been through so much. Someone that's been through all of that may be thinking about killing himself. Yep. Have you been thinking about killing yourself? You just normalized what they may be thinking and going through. Right. That's right. That's a great So to way. validate and to normalize. Yep. Yeah. And, and, and never to be afraid to ask that question. It, it takes a lot of courage for somebody to ask that question. And we don't have time to get into all the myth. Uh, behind why people don't do that, but uh, maybe we'll come on and do another one talking about some of the myths behind yeah. uh, why, number one, why people take their life, and number two, why we don't ask the question. Um, and um, that maybe we'll take some time next time to talk about that. Uh, we just got a few more minutes here, and, and I just wanted to share with you that out in um, – you're out in California. You guys right. have had, uh, I think, close to 10,000 cases of uh, corona. Here we are in Georgia, close to 6,000. It's a tough, it's a tough season in our country. Uh, what what would be the one nugget that you would want to give to people that they can use as a takeaway tonight? You know, take care of yourself. Take some time. Breathe. We're in some cramped quarters. A lot of us. If you start getting antsy and you get anxiety, if you can walk out in the front, walk out in the backyard, take some time for yourself. Think before you speak. But I also want to leave folks. Um, we've talked about suicide a bit with the 1-800-273-TALK. That's the National Crisis Lifeline. But, you know, as everybody, there's a, there's a lot of information online. Mm -hmm. But I think um, take some time for yourself. And I, w I would say to anybody that's listening, if you are having thoughts of suicide, don't keep it to yourself. Call the number again, 1-800-273-TALK. Uh, that line is manned 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And uh, it takes thousands of calls every day. And, um, and uh, there's no reason for you to go through what you're going through all by yourself. There's someone that you can talk to. And, and if you don't want to talk, and I'm interrupting you again. I'm blowing everything after no, listening to skill right. I can right here. But I want to leave them with, with the, the crisis text line, too, the 741-741, because we know, especially kids, they don't like to talk. Right. You know, if I can get my boys to call me once a month and say, hi, Dad, that's a good one. Right. So some people don't want to talk. But if you can text, there's a crisis text line, 741-741. That's helpful also. Kevin, I appreciate your time tonight. I'm not sure how many folks were online. I think we might have had a little technical issues. There was a few folks saying that they couldn't see us this evening, but then some folks said they were watching. Okay. Uh, we're going to post this online again. And uh, Kevin and I are both old school. We're both class of 81. <laughs> we're trying. So we are, I, I don't know about you, but I, I didn't take computer class seriously when I was in school. <laughs> No. And, uh, that, that's my downfall. Uh, but we'll get this technical part figured out and we'll yes. come back strong. Uh, and that's what I want us, that's my takeaway for tonight is just we're going to come back strong. And yes, sir. so we have to do, as you were saying, we, let's, we may not feel like doing it, but let's go ahead and put our clothes on in the morning and, and do, find something to do. Uh, that's the that's the thing that I really appreciated about you tonight. It's just uh, I'm going to get up in the morning and do something. You know, there you go. So, do something. Yep. Yeah, so that's there good. you go. Kevin, Kevin, thank you for having me. Hey, it's Absolute great pleasure. Y'all have a great evening. Bye bye.